So what's a good way to mount all your accessories to your scuba setup? Let's dive in and find out. Welcome back to Tampa Bay Diving. My name is Blake and I'm a professional recreational scuba diving instructor and content creator. And here on this channel, I make videos with the sole purpose to help you improve your dives. So if you haven't already, please dive down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that dive bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. So what's a good way to mount your accessories to your scuba setup? Well, I've got mine here to show you how I do it. So keep in mind, this is how I do it. And there are many different methods to attaching accessories to your scuba setup. And not all of them fit every diver, but this is what works for me and I wanted to show you. Is it the best setup? I don't think there really is such a thing. Is it the only way to do it? No, there's plenty of many different ways and I would love to hear how some of you do it down in the comments. So comment down below and tell me how you got yours set up. Just so you know, this is not a sponsor video. Everything you see here, I bought and paid for with my own money, but let's dive in and take a look. So as you can see over here, I've got my recreational setup and from the back, it's got an Al-80 that's filled with nitrox. So for my setup, I use the Halcyon Infinity Series backplate and wing, and I've got the straps that go with it and the stainless steel backplate. Now this stainless steel backplate weighs approximately six pounds. So that gives me six pounds of integrated weight. Now. You can buy the wing itself a la carte. You don't have to pay for the stainless steel backplate and the nylon straps. This is probably the best way to go about it if I had to choose. This stainless steel backplate is nothing more than a bent piece of metal. The only reason why it costs what it costs is because they've got their stamp on the backplate as well as in the webbing. Do you need to pay for that? I don't think so personally. Many dive shops carry back plates and nylon webbing that you can buy for a fraction of the cost. But this was a part of a key man deal and I got it all together and I got a great price, so I bought it. Now, this back plate did come with a padding and a lot of people ask, do these bolts cut into your back when you're diving? Well, no, my back is straight. I don't have any issues with it, but I could see where some people might. And so Halcyon includes a padding that goes attached to these holes right here and it provides a level of comfort and a barrier in between those bolts. But like I said, I don't need it. It's an extra thing to clean. And I like having these holes available because for our next piece of gear, I like to run two pieces of bungee through holes on each side and secure my DSMBs to that. Now, why do I do it like that? Simple, because I could clip them down onto my crotch strap or another part of a D-ring, but then that would create drag and it would it'd make me look sloppy in the water. So what I did on each side, I ran two pieces of bungee through one hole down here and one hole up here. And then I simply slide my DSMB up through those bungee cables. Now this keeps it secure and off to the side and I really don't feel it when I'm diving down there. And it's easy to pull out. All I have to simply do is grab it and pull it out and it's there. And some people say, well, what happens if you do a giant stride and it comes out of that bungee? Well, it's quite possible it's happened to me before. So in order to keep from losing it, I secure the handle of the reel with a double ender to a D ring down on my weight pocket. And if this were to fall out, I'd simply just need to put it back in. Now, because I bought a full set here, I got the weight pockets that came with it at a discounted price. And one of the things you may have noticed when we were talking about the stainless steel back plate weighing six pounds is, well, Blake, don't you need ditchable weight in case you need to get positively buoyant? And yes, that's part of diving is knowing your requirements and what fits you right. So as a recreational diver in this setup, wearing a three mil, I need about eight pounds of weight in salt water to get neutrally buoyant. So I have six right here. So all I do is I simply take out these pockets and I put a simple one pounder on each side. If something were to happen, then all I have to do is ditch both pockets and I've ditched two pounds, I'm positively buoyant. And as you can see up here, I have my first stage regulator, which is the Scuba Pro Mark 19 Evo. Now this is an environmentally sealed regulator and 
I can use it for multiple different reasons, recreational diving, technical diving, cold water diving, pretty much anything that you can see. All of the Scuba Pro regulators that I have here are environmentally sealed and they do multiple job functions, which is why I bought them in the first place. So my first one is my alternate air source, and this is the Scuba Pro A700. And the way I like to set it up is I keep it on a necklace and I put the necklace around my neck. So if for any reason that I need to get my alternate air out and breathe off of it, it's right there and I don't have to reach or fumble around for it. My primary is a Scuba Pro G260. Now this one I have on a little bit of a different setup. This is on a seven foot hose and there's a reason for that. If you've ever encountered an out of air diver, most of the time they're panicked unless they just were rock stars. And normally the first thing that a panicked out of air diver goes for is the closest diver's regulator that's in their mouth. I've had that happen to me before and it's not a fun experience for either party. So what I like to do is I like to keep it on a seven foot hose. That way, once that diver does get my primary regulator, I can put some distance in between us. And until they calm down, that's the way I would like it to be. So another important part of diving is you have to know how much air you have. And there really are two main methods of doing this, either through an air integrated computer or a standard SPG. For me, I like to go with the SPG. I have this one ran on a standard hose and I have it bolt snapped onto my D ring. And it's just there, it's simple. All I have to do is look down to my left hand side. This one is a Scuba Pro, it glows in the dark and it's easy to see. Now, when shopping for SPGs, you can simply get like a standard one like this, where there's simply just the SPG by itself, no other features, no compass, nothing like that. Some of the SPGs that you'll buy will come in like a combo of that, and they'll have what's called like a little boot around it, a little basically black rubber protective guard around it. I don't like to use those simply because I think a lot of crud gets in there and you have to clean it out really well, and it's quite difficult to do sometimes. So. I just go with the standard one and I keep a bolt snap to my side. It works out great for me. Now, going back over here, what you'll see attached up here on the top right hand side of the strap, you'll see that I have a cutting device. Well, this is an easy cut. And there was a time when divers used to have either on their arms or their legs, somewhere strapped to them was those big Navy style cutting knives that really nobody uses anymore. Most of the time if you're diving, you wanna keep a low profile. So this is a good way to go about it, I believe. This easy cut is small, compact, and it'll cut through most of anything. Fishing line, monofilament, even wetsuits. These things are amazing, they're small, and they do a great job, and they're inexpensive. And if you need to, the blades are interchangeable. Going back over here on my left-hand side, I have a bolt snap attached to my Tuvatec flashlight. So with Tuvatec, I think they're a really good brand. I have this one. This does multiple functions. It does high beams, it does low beams, it does strobes. And this is my emergency light. If something were to go wrong, if I were blown off a wreck or a dive site or lost during a night dive, and I needed to get overhead attention from a helicopter, a plane, or a boat, anything, I'm pretty much gonna use this. Now I do apologize, I wouldn't show you my other light. It is a wrist mounted light, but it is currently getting serviced and I don't have it with me at the moment. Now if you come and take a class with me, I'm gonna preach redundancy, having multiple backup methods for certain things, such as lights and cutting devices. And as you can see, I've already got one here and one there, and I normally carry one on my wrist, but I keep another one right down here. Now this didn't come with it, but I bought it anyway. This is the Halcyon titanium knife, and I really like this because it will not rust. It's great, it's right there in case if I need it. And it's sharp, it'll cut through pretty much anything. This one's pretty cool because it has imprints for wrenches and a hex key set right here. I don't ever use it just because I don't wanna take the risk of cutting anything that I'm not supposed to, but it's a cool option to have. So we went through everything that I keep mounted on my back plate and wing right here, but what about the other things that I use when I'm diving? Well, let's take a look. So one thing that you'll probably need in diving to carry around all the extra gear that you have is a bag. And if any of you have ever been in a gym class and carried a gym bag, your standard one, you notice that it probably doesn't smell too great in there. So what I like to do is carry my Kraken Aquatics dive bag. Now this one is filled with holes so all the water can drain out of it. It's easy to carry, it's great, it's sturdy. 
I personally love it. I've had it a few years and there's been no rips or tears and the zipper is still strong. So inside here is all the stuff that I don't normally carry on here. Starting off with, we have dive mask. Now this is the Scuba Pro Gorilla Frameless Mask. This is what fits me, fits my face. It's comfortable for me to wear. So I got two of them. This is my primary, this is my backup. If something were to happen to me when I'm diving, I could simply take this out of my pocket and put it on. So another thing that you'll probably need in diving is some form of hand protection. So if you're going through a wreck or going fossil hunting or just generally down on the reef, there's a lot of things that can cut or hurt your hands. So you want something to protect it. Do you need to go to a dive shop and spend an unnecessary amount of money on some neoprene gloves? No, not really. So for me, what I like to do is I go to Home Depot and these standard work gloves are perfect for diving. I've had these for a while. They haven't worn out just yet, but if I need to replace them, it's six or seven bucks versus 50. And talking about dive computers, you're definitely gonna need one in today's world. So what I chose to go with is the Shearwater Perdix. In my opinion, this is the best diving computer ever made. But like I said, that's just my opinion. Each and every single diver has their own. This is the one for me. It's large screen, it's bright, I can see it. It's, it's easy to plan dives on, and I love it. It's a workhorse that's lasted me, and if I'm gonna dive anything, it's gonna be one that has a changeable battery. Here, if the battery's draining, I can simply take it out, put another AA in, and I'm good to go. The only maintenance that I really ever need to do is change the battery, clean the O-rings, and occasionally upgrade the firmware which is easy enough to do. So, but on the back of it, as we were talking about redundancy, I have yet another easy cut. Now moving on down, what about your feet? Well, there are many different tools to do many different jobs, and there are many different shoes to wear for different activities that you may do. You wouldn't wear hiking boots going on a two mile run, like if you can, more power to you. And there are different dive booties for different scenarios. For me, on my recreational setup, whether I'm on boot or short, I tend to use these Scuba Pro Deltas. They work great, they fit me, and they're comfortable, but they also have these imprinted soles on the bottom here, which allows me for more grip. And getting grip on a dive boat is quite important because if you've never been on one, it can get very slippery very fast, especially with divers getting out of the water and back on. Now, in order to go along with our booties, we gotta have a good set of fins. So what fins do I use when I'm recreational diving? Let's take a look. So for recreational diving, I like to use the Mares Avanti Quattros. These fins I've had for a long time and I can't say enough good things about them. For recreational diving, carrying a single tank and limited amount of gear, these are perfect. They get me through the water, they're flexible, they're strong, and they're resistant. As you can see, these are well loved and they've been through a lot of wrecks, a lot of reefs, and really a lot of everything in diving and they just continue to last and last and I really haven't had to buy any others but I was curious a little bit about the dive right ones but let me know down below in the comments what do you use for fins when you're diving recreationally and another thing that to note on the fins is straps make all the difference so there's a lot of straps that come on the fins that are either adjustable or they're rubber but for me I like to use the stainless steel straps they're flexible, they're easy to clean, they last forever, and they're comfortable to wear. Well, we talked about my complete setup and all the attachment things we use, but there's one other important part of diving, and that is exposure protection. So in Florida during most of the year, we can get away with diving just in board shorts and a rash guard, but in months like this one, February, January, December, it's really not an option unless you're just strong and you never get cold. But I get cold pretty quick at this time of the year. So I like to wear my bare reactive three millimeter wetsuit. So this wetsuit is strong, sturdy. It fits me great. It's lasted forever. I clean it after each and every single dive and I hang it on the baker's hanger to protect the integrity of the shoulder. And overall it's worked great. I don't get cold underwater. I don't have any discomfort in wearing it. And it's just overall amazing. But there are many different brands of wetsuits and the manufacturers are all great in their own perspective ways, but this is the brand that I like and it works for me. I'm sure each and every single one of you have got your own. 
And again, let me know down in the comments, what brand of wetsuit do you wear? So we've talked about my complete dive setup, all the accessories that go along with it and my exposure protection. But like I said in the intro, there's a couple more announcements that we have to make and I can't wait to tell you any longer. So let's clean up all this dive gear. So now that we got all that cleaned up, I do have a couple of announcements I wanna make. The channel is growing faster than I could have ever deemed possible and your feedback has been amazing. And I wanna thank each and every single one of you. You truly have my heartfelt gratitude and I can't do it without you. So thanks for joining me and being a part of my family. Now, having said that, working behind the scenes, you may remember that we went to DEMA and we had interviews and we interviewed different manufacturers and had conversations with them. And some good has come out of that. As the manufacturers have seen our channel grow through the likes, the comments, the shares, everything really, We've been able to get a couple of affiliation deals in place. And really the first and the big one is with Backscatter. So we are now an affiliate for Backscatter and you'll see more content coming from them and more links to gear that we recommend. Now, the reason why I chose to be affiliated with Backscatter is because I deal with them personally and I have received nothing but great customer service for them with high quality products. And I wanna recommend that to you guys. And that's the only way really that I'm gonna do it is it through somebody I trust. So having said that, I made a couple of purchases. So here we have the latest purchase that I made from Backscatter. This is the Cinebags grouper bag. This is an amazing gear bag to carry around for underwater photography and video equipment. It doubles as a rinse tank. It's got a lot of pockets to keep your gear dry and, and it's just overall sturdy and well protective of the gear. So along with the grouper bag, you may remember the setup we showed you in our DEMA video. Well. I put an order in for it. So I went with the tray, the arms, the floats, the lights, and the lens mod that we have here for wide angle. And I wanted to do that to improve in our underwater videography and photography shot. Now, I'll be the first to tell you I'm not any expert in underwater video photography, but I am working my way up to it. And it is a hobby of mine. And that's part of the reason why we did the affiliation is in case any of you guys were interested, we could recommend gear for you. Now, this is just the starter. This is gonna be for the GoPro, but I do plan to advance in, into probably a Sony A7 camera, the latest model that they have for that. And so we can get more quality underwater video and photos for you. But I'm excited for this. This is gonna be fun, and especially on the GoPro. It's gonna be awesome, guys. This setup, I immediately fell in love with it, and I can't wait to test it out. All we're waiting on is, as you can see behind me, it's quite a windy day. El Nino has affected our winter pretty bad. We've had a lot of rain and a lot of wind, so the visibility hasn't been great. But now that we got this set up and as soon as the winds die down, we're gonna get out there and we're gonna start shooting and see what kind of content we can get for you. But I promise it's gonna be worth it. Now, going along with the equipment that we purchased, I also needed some help from an expert. So I started following Mateus Labo and his underwater photography and videography courses. And I gotta say, I spent my own money and I'm very happy I did so. He goes over through his courses with different tips and tricks on gear purchases, setups, recommendations, shot angles, many different things. And it was worth every single penny. So down in the description below, you're gonna see a link to his channel and his class. It may earn me a small commission, just like all of our other affiliate links, but there's no extra cost to you. And so I highly recommend that if underwater photography and videography is something that you wanna get into, or maybe have already started, but wanna improve, highly check out Backscatter and his channel. You will be happy you did so. It's great resources for everybody, and I just can't say enough good things about it. So along with the gear that we purchased, we do have one other piece of exciting news and I couldn't wait any longer to tell you. So we've officially booked our 2025 trip to Roatan. That's right. So we're gonna spend a week out on the beautiful island of Roatan just off the coast of Honduras, getting some amazing dives in. Now Roatan is home to the second largest barrier reef in the world, first one being the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. On this reef, we're gonna see some amazing wildlife, coral, fish, sharks, turtles, everything above, and some, get some good wreck diving in.
Now, the bonus for this trip is they are a five-star resort from their accommodations to their customer service and everything in between. It's all inclusive meals, accommodation, and unlimited diving. That's right. You can dive as much as you can handle. Now, don't go into the chamber or anything, but definitely I'm going to be taking advantage of that on this trip. We've got several spots still open. I went ahead and announced it to our newsletter followers first on our website. So if you want to be the first to know about trips and everything, head over to our website at tampabaydiving.com, subscribe to the newsletter, and you'll be the first to know. Now on this trip, we do have several spaces available and we have some opportunities to take courses. So that's right. You can get open water certified in Roatan, Honduras with me. So if you live in or around the Tampa area or are gonna be visiting the Tampa area before we head out to Roatan, you can take your e-learning and pool sessions with me here. And then what we'll do is we'll do your open water certifications in Roatan. I can't think of a more exciting place to take a course than that beautiful island. I've been there many times before and there's a reason why I keep going back. It's absolutely beautiful, the people are great and it's a once in a lifetime trip and each one is different. So after you're done watching this video, head on over to our website at tampabaydiving.com slash travel. So from there, go down and click on the spaces available button and that'll take you to a PDF brochure where all the details of the trip will be available to you. It's gonna be a once in a lifetime trip and I can't wait to share this experience with all of you. I know we're gonna have a blast. We're gonna make some new friends, do some great dives and hopefully see a lot of interesting and exciting things down there. It's never let me down before, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to start now. So that's all the time that we have for today, guys. But again, I want to thank each and every single one of you for tuning in. It means the world to me. If you haven't already, please dive down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that dive bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And please share this video with all of your friends and spread the word so we can keep growing and getting more great content out to you guys. I'll be back next week with another video, but until then, plan your dive. Dive your plane.